This is Simona here and in this nugget I'd like to introduce you to this course Agile Essentials. So I'm assuming that you know nothing or very little about this Agile thing people keep talking about and I'm imagining that maybe a colleague has been saying to you we need to go Agile and you're thinking um, okay but I have no idea what you're talking about and what that means to us and why that might be a good idea. So in this course we'll learn about what Agile actually is along with many of the terms and buzzwords associated with it. We'll see what the benefits of going Agile are and most importantly what it'll mean in practical terms with regards to your processes and your people for that matter. So first things first, what is Agile? Well, in a nutshell, it's a way to manage projects by breaking them down into small and manageable chunks. And these chunks are generically known as iterations. Now, in theory, Agile can be used for any type of project, but it was founded in software development. So that's the angle that I'll be taking for this course. Hmm. OK, so how does Agile compare to using traditional project management methods for a software development project? Well, traditionally, we would start off with the analysts working out all of the details of the product we're going to create, and we end up with a product specification that's very well defined and documented down to the very last detail. And then that specification gets passed to the architects, and then it goes to the UX designers, and then the coding can start, and then we can test it, and then finally we can deploy it and get feedback from users. Phew! So you can see why this approach is often called waterfall. Now the problem with this is that we've spent goodness knows how much time and money creating something really rather extensive before we've had any user feedback. We've had to plan for and anticipate up front all of the features that a user might want. And of course with different teams of people being responsible for each phase of the project, this can potentially lead to disconnect. And worst of all, if we run out of money, say here, we haven't got a product that can actually be used at all. So with Agile, instead of these great big sequential phases, we have these short cycles or iterations, typically just a couple of weeks or so. And the idea is that we produce a working version of the product after each iteration. And within each cycle, we do just enough of the work from each of those big phases that we saw before to produce that working iteration of the product. So just enough planning, just enough coding, testing or whatever in order to complete the features that we've decided to do. So you can see we have the designers, the developers and the business people all working together simultaneously rather than those strictly sequenced separate events that we saw with Waterfall. Now, because each iteration is so short and we're getting user feedback so fast, we're learning what works and what users want as we go along, rather than having to anticipate it all up front like we did with the waterfall approach. So we're inspecting and adapting as we go along with each iteration. And because these cycles are so short, we can, if we need to, change direction very easily. If market conditions suddenly dictate that a particular feature is of higher priority than we originally planned, then no problem. We can work on that on the very next cycle. So now we can refine our definition of Agile as the principle of software development based on iterative and incremental development. Now the basis of this approach is the Manifesto for Agile Software Development. This was written in 2001, so it's been around for a while. But anyway, it was written by a group of 17 software practitioners who got together to work out why so many software projects were failing. And they agreed on four main values. The first of which is that we value individuals and interactions over and above processes and tools. Now that's not to say that we shouldn't have processes and tools, but simply that we should prioritize face-to-face -face interactions above them. We shouldn't be blindly following workflows at the expense of having an actual chat with someone. And the second value is that we prioritize working software over and above comprehensive documentation. Because traditionally we would see heaps and heaps of documentation being produced before the product was released for testing. But here we're saying that working software is much more important. At the end of the iteration we need just enough documentation and software that actually works. Value number three is that customer collaboration trumps contract negotiation. Now, as before, we're not completely dismissing having a contract altogether, but it shouldn't lock down all of the details when the project hasn't even started. So we should collaborate to find the best solutions as we go along, you know, as things evolve. We don't want to be locked into that set of signed off requirements at the very beginning of the project. And finally, the fourth value, responding to change, is more important 
than following a plan. Of course, you do need to plan what you're going to achieve in the short term for the next iteration, but we're building software for today, not tomorrow. So it's a waste of time and effort to produce these enormous plans that predict two years into the future. So Agile recognizes that software projects are unpredictable and there will be changes. So here's the summary with all four of the values of the manifesto. And we're not saying that we don't need the things on the right hand side. It's just that the things on the left are more important. Now, as you learn more about Agile, there'll be quite a few new terms which you will encounter. Obviously, we'll explain many as we go along in this course. But in the meantime, the best resource I can suggest to you is the glossary on the Agile Alliance website. It's quite easy to find. And when you get to the site, you'll find the glossary under the resources link. And it really is quite useful. So the next time you hear somebody talking about acceptance testing or a burn down chart or whatever, you can look it up here. And many of the entries have links to further information too. So an excellent resource. OK, so to wrap up this nugget, we now know that Agile is the principle of software development based on iterative and incremental development, an alternative to sequential waterfall project planning. We looked at the four values of the Agile manifesto, and also we saw that the Agile Alliance website is a really good resource, particularly that glossary. And finally, if you are new to Agile, then it would make best sense to work through the videos in order. But hey, it's not going to be a huge problem if you have a bit more knowledge and you prefer to dive straight into the topics of most interest to you. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.